Hello everybody, welcome back to Let's Play Pokemon White 2, and this is part 9. In the last part, we- it actually took a little bit longer than I thought. We explored the Burbank City comp- we explored the Burbank Complex, which I thought would take one video, but it turns out it's taking two, so whatever. Ah! Ah, stupid elected, why do you keep getting in my way? It's kind of surprising that I'm getting all these elected to appear, because in Black 2, which when I, I remember when I played through Black 2, I, I I remember Magby, which is basically the equivalent of elected and the one that you catch in Black 2 instead of White 2. I remember that being pretty rare. I remember Growlithe being extremely common and Magby being pretty rare. But now I'm trying to catch Growlithe and not elected, so it's just not working in my favor, isn't it? Hmm. Whatever, and this girl is talking about the habitat list that we... Oh! And I'm getting free Great Balls! Well, gee, it's a good thing I'm talking to all these NPCs because we just get free stuff from all of it. Isn't that nice? And here's a trainer. I didn't even realize this girl was a trainer. And she's giving away what Pokemon she's gonna use beforehand, which is gonna be a Woobat. If I knew it was gonna be a Woobat, I would've switched to Lumina. Do I still have Lumina in my party? I'm better. Currently, I put Nitori first in my party, but I think Lumina will just be more useful since she'll be Electro-type and all, so I'll just switch to Lumina really quick. Uh, actually, I'll see if Nitori can handle this Woobat by herself before switching to Lumina. Just for the heck of it. Nitori faded us! Stupid critical hits. I hate critical hits. Oh well, I really wanted to use Lumina for this battle, so I'll use Lumina. Come on, Lumina, take care of that thing with the Thundershock. And all that Woobat's gonna do is use Odor Sleuth. Well, gee, that's pointless. Yeah, that was a pretty easy battle, except that Nitori unfortunately fainted. Nitori isn't really having the best luck with battling, but oh well, Lumina got to level 13, so that's kinda nice. Currently, I think I like Lumina better than Elected anyway, and as I said before, there will be more electric Pokemon that we'll be able to encounter later on, and I guess this is another worker who, uh, uh, is giving me an ether. I thought he was just gonna run off like the other scientists I, enc I encountered, but instead he's gonna go, but he's, he's gonna give me free stuff before going back to work. That's nice. Well, there are there any more workers that I have to find? I don't know if there are. Uh, maybe there's one down there. I see a little railing spot down there. I don't really remember where all these workers are gonna be. Yeah, there's one right here. And of course we're gonna have to battle him, but I don't have Nitori, and Nico is a very low HP, so I'm gonna use Nimbus, because Nimbus hasn't battled in a long time. Da 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 We have to battle, and maybe- I think this might actually be the last worker we have to fight, because I think there were three workers, and this is the third one that we've fought so far. And there's a Magby, and it's actually good that we're fighting this Magby in the raid, because the raid will actually weaken Magby's fire attacks, provided it does no fire attacks, and I bet you anything it knows Ember. But I'm just gonna use Quick Attack, I guess. I don't- that, Magby doesn't really use any physical attacks. The only thing I gotta be aware of with Magby, though, was that it has a Flame Body ability, so I gotta be really careful about getting burned. Unfortunately, Nimbus is just being able to avoid all of Magby's smog attacks. See, now he's using Ember. But of course, that won't do a lot of damage because of the rain. So, one more quick attack and that back piece done. And now the flame body activates just as Nimbus finishes the battle. Does he have any other Pokemon? Well, Nimbus is gonna get to level 13, but I doubt he's gonna evolve. I don't think he's gonna evolve until he gets to like level 20 or something, based on what his happiness will be by then. But here's a coughing, which I want to use a Pokemon with special attacks for. In fact, I, in fact, I wanted to use Nitori for this, but that's no longer an option because Nitori fainted. Instead, I'll use Lumina, I guess, because Lumina is the other special attacker I have. static ability ever activate? I don't know, and for some reason Lumina was faster than that coughing. I guess coughing are slow. But I thought Lumina was pretty slow, but I don't know. Well, let's go back to, I guess, the worker's boss, and why did my emulator lag? That's kind of weird. I don't know why I did that. 
But did we defeat all the workers? Hey, you did it, didn't you? This is a token of my thanks, and we get a TM for Rock Smash. That's actually gonna be very useful for Nimbus. In fact, I gotta teach that I gotta teach that to Nimbus really quick. Because Nimbus currently does not have any fighting attacks, and I gotta switch to my bottom screen for this. Whoops. I accidentally hit my pause button. Before I actually recorded these last two parts, I made a couple of hotkeys for my emulator. I made one to pause the screen and one to flip the screens, which is, I, I just pressed the flip bottom screen switch right now. So here are the TMs that we have right now, and I'm gonna use the one for Rock Smash on Nimbus really quick. Yes, I do want to use it on Nimbus. Da, 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 da. What move am I going to replace it with? I am going to replace, uh, Foresight, I guess. Actually, Foresight might be useful if I'm up against a ghost-type Pokémon. But, well... Am I gonna replace Foresight or Endure? That's the real question. Counter, I think, might come in handy later on, but I'm just gonna forget Endure. I don't think Endure will be that... Come on, can I go back to where I... Yeah, I wanna forget Endure. Da 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 da... Now, the weird thing I might as well mention about TMs, really quick, is that if I go and check Nimbus out here so far, you'll notice that Rock Smash currently only has 10 PP rather than 15, which is its max. And the reason for that is that when you teach a TM move to a Pokémon, it starts off with the same amount of PP as the previous move did. And since Endure had 10 PP, then this Rock Smash tends starts off with 10 PP. And the reason for this is that is to prevent abuse of TMs to, re to restore PP. Because what you could do is just keep teaching a TM to somebody to restore a move's PP, and they didn't want- and the developers didn't want that, so they just made this- this conserva conservation of PP rule. But I think we did all we want to do in Burbank City for now, except for one thing, and that's catch a Growlithe, because the last one I tried to battle ran away from me. So I guess I'll just pause the video and I'll come back when I encounter a Growlithe or something. Now the the thing about Growlithe though is that it knows Roar. The thing I found out is that is that Roar does for some reason does not work on higher level Pokemon. So I think now that my Pokemon are leveled up a bit, that hopefully this that hopefully Growlithe should be easier to capture. So I'll pause the video for now and see you later when I when I encounter another Growlithe. Okay, I found a Growlithe, and I just had Nimbus weaken the Growlithe a little bit. In fact, on the previous turn, that Growlithe tried to use Roar, but it failed, because of course Nimbus is at a higher level. But now that I weakened this Growlithe a little bit, I'm gonna switch to Lumina and have her paralyze that Growlithe, because Growlithe, Growlithe's HP is not in the red zone yet. And whenever a Pokémon's HP is not in the red zone, I just like to put a status problem on it just to make it easier to catch. And that's way I won't have to waste Great Balls or everything, so hopefully an ordinary Pokéball will still work on this Growlithe. But Growlithe isn't really that hard a Pokémon to catch, so I shouldn't be too worried about it. And I already know what nickname I'm gonna give to this Growlithe, despite the fact that I've never caught a Growlithe in my- in- in White 1, because Growlithe wasn't even available in White 1 because it's not even a Unova Pokémon. But the nickname that I want to give to this Growlithe, and yes, it is caught, I just wanted to make sure of that. But the nickname I gave to- I'm gonna give to this Growlithe, I- I, I always nickname a male Growlithe a different thing. The nickname I usually like to give to a male Growlithe is Rigel, which is actually the name of a star, a bright blue star. And that stems that stemmed from this from this story I wrote once, where this character is is riding on a on a really big dog who has these really pretty blue eyes, and from the and its name is Rigel, and it looks kind of like an Arcanine. So that's why I like to give Growlithe the nickname Rigel, but. Since that name doesn't really make sense otherwise, and since this is a public let's play, I'm gonna name him something else. And you might have seen this nickname if you've ever watched my Pokemon Attack Showcase. But the name I'm giving to this Growlithe is actually the name of... of this figure from Irish mythology. It's this great hero. And if, it, if any of you have ever visited or lived in Ireland, you probably know this name really well. This is Cúhulín. The great hero of Ireland, this this warrior who was present throughout a lot of Irish mythology, and yeah, so that's a and, and the weird and the weird thing about this name is that the coup part of his name actually means dog, and since Growlithe is a dog, then that really makes sense, doesn't it? But right now I'm going to head back to a Pokemon Center and check out the Pokemon I just caught. Hopefully, Kuhulan has a good nature. I'm not quite sure if he will or not. <laughs> hmm. 
In fact, I'm even surprised I'm- Oh, I, and hey, I got a medal. And actually, the last time I was in the Pokemon Center, and this was off-screen, I got a medal called the Dowsing Beginner. Which I thought was weird because I never- because I don't have the Dowsing Machine yet. But I guess you just get it for picking up multiple items or something. And what's this medal? It's the Naming Chap Medal. I guess you get that by... I guess- I guess that's a medal you receive for nickname a bunch of your- for nicknaming a bunch of your Pokemon. Which is very easy for me to get since I nickname every Pokemon that I catch. And although there are some rare exceptions, like for a, a legendary or something. And hey, he's holding a Rostberry, that's nice. But I guess that's true of both Vulpix and Growlithe, is that they usually hold Rostberries. And he has the Intimidate ability, which I noticed at the beginning of my battle with him. <laughs> which I guess is- which I guess makes sense, because in, in the actual mythology, Kukulin is actually- actually presents kind of an intimidating air, so this totally makes sense, right? But on the other hand, he's bashful, which doesn't really fit him, but who cares, as long as it's not in bad nature. And I also looked at Genitor, the magna- the Magnemite I just caught. And, a mag and this Magnemite has a modest nature, which is actually a really good nature for Magnemite to have. Although an even better nature for it is Timid, which is actually the- the nature of the Magnemite I have in Black 2. And- and this one actually has the Magnet Pole ability, which will prevent Steel-type Pokémon from running away from a battle with it. Which I guess is kinda useful, I- I kinda see the Sturdy ability as a little bit more useful. But, and, and Sturdy, of course, will be, make it be able to not be able to be KO'd if, it, if it's at full health. But, <laughs> but, I guess, but oh well, it's a magnet pull ability and, it, and it's modest, so I guess I shouldn't be complaining, really. But anyway, the only thing that I can really do now is, is, get my, is train my Pokemon up a bit and then, and then eventually battle Roxy when I'm ready. And I'm gonna wait until all my Pokemon are, I guess, level 15, 18-ish until, uh, until I do that. And I, I don't know whether I should get my Pokemon to level 15 or 18. I think I got my, all my Pokemon to level 18 before battling Roxy last time when I when I played this game for the last time. But I thought there was this uh, there's this one other building that that would that was important before defeating Roxy. So maybe I'll try to find that. And that'll take a little while. But I don't know if it's in this city or if it's back in Flocacy or if it's in Aspersia or something. I really don't know where it is. But if I find any- I'm gonna explore around a little bit more, and this might take a while, so I'll just pause the game for now and see if I come across anything else interesting. Okay, so there are a few things I want to mention. Right now I'm in the Verbank City Pokemon Center. But first of all, this lady here has a little questionnaire. So she's asking me whether I want- whether I prefer to play outside or at home. Well, given how many video games I play, I'm gonna answer at home. But which one are you interested in? The thing everybody knows, or the thing nobody knows? Well, I'm into a lot of weird stuff, especially supernatural stuff, so I'll say the thing nobody knows, I guess. And we don't even get a reward for filling out the questionnaire. How boring. Now this little girl says to challenge poison-type Pokémon with poison-type Pokémon, because poison-type Pokémon cannot be poisoned. So that's the basis of her advice, but an even better po type to use against poison types is a Steel-type, because Steel-type Pokémon are immune to poison attacks, like I just explained in the last part. And this guy says that the more gym badges you have, the more items you can buy at a shop. So now that we do have one gym badge, if we if we go to this Pokemart here, then we can actually buy Great Balls in addition to Pokeballs, so that's kind of useful. Of course, since I'm low on ordinary Pokeballs, and since I like having ordinary Pokeballs, actually one trick, and I don't want to buy 46 Pokeballs either, one trick that to buying Pokeballs is if you buy 10 of these, I think, then you'll actually get a Premier Ball for free with it. So let's see if I can get that to happen. Mm -hmm. And I get a Premier Ball as an added bonus. So I just figured I'd do that really quick. <laughs> get a little Premier Ball along with my Pokeball. So now I'll have more Pokeballs than I'll ever need. Well, hooray, yippee. And I gotta be using those to catch a lot of Pokemon anyway, because I like to save Great Balls and Ultra Balls for later. And actually, when I was exploring around Dispersia City, there was this lady on the second floor of one of the buildings who gave me a free Ultra Ball, which was pretty nice. And I think it, they only- I think you only get the free Ultra Ball after defeating Charon, so I had to talk to her act after getting that badge. But all I could really do now was train my team up to level 15, since I don't think I have the patience to get them to level 18 like I said I might. I think that's what I did in my playthrough of Black 2 as well. So I'll train my Pokémon a bit, and then I'll see you in the gym. Okay, so I'm finished training my Pokémon pretty much. I just got this other weird medal that was... I think it had something to do with walking a number of steps. I forgot what the medal was, actually. I can't believe I forgot what it was already. But there are two things I want to do before going into the gym. 
One, actually three things, but one of them is I want to buy some antidotes from this Pokemon here. These antidotes will be really helpful in the battle against Roxy. And I'm also going to buy a super potion, I think, just for the heck of it. I'm going to buy a couple of those. Actually, I, don't, I think I might only need one, just because I think we'll get a free fresh water upon entering the gym, and that'll heal the same amount of HP. But the other thing I want to do is I want to demonstrate uh, the cross transceiver. And the reason why I'm doing that, if I can bring up the, trans the cross transceiver, is one thing we can do is we can call Bianca. And when we call Bianca, we can actually have her check the happiness of a Pokemon. So that's a very interesting feature. So the features that are available here is just, this one's just to talk, and but this one is the one I want, is for looking at friendship. So I'm going to click that. And now it's going to give me a selection of which Pokemon I want to use. So I'll pick Nimbus. I want to know how... And I want, I don't know, I want to know how well Nimbus is getting along with me. So, according to Bianca, Nimbus and I are, seem really close. They look, we look so happy, and it's enough to make her happy, too. So, that is basically it, and I'm gonna say goodbye, because that is, like, all I want to do right now. So, I think that's it. So, now, well, there's actually one more thing I want to do before challenging the gym. And what that is, is I'm actually going to go out to Route 20 for this to avoid having... Well, actually, I think I'm just going to go into the gym. The thing that I actually want to do is have Lumina evolve, because Lumina evolves at level 15, and she's getting really close to level 15 right now, and I totally walked into the wrong house. But anyway, let's check out the gym. Now, remember how I was saying earlier when we were in Charon's gym, how some of the gyms have different, have slightly different variations of the main gym theme? This is one of those gyms. In fact, this is a really interesting red edition of the main gym theme. Listen to this. Well, there's nothing now because this is quiet because there's a sound studio up ahead. Okay, now we're beginning to hear the music. This is a Pokemon gym and it's also a rock club. The gym leader and the others are practicing inside, but please feel free to challenge all of them. Oh, you'll need to stay hydrated and yay, free fresh water. Hooray for fresh water. Because water is really important in a gym, and this goes for the ones in real life, too. But listen to this! P-E-M-O-N Pokemon P-O-K-E-M-O-N Pokemon! Yay! <laughs> I just love the fact that they just do all the vocals in, in, this, in this rendition here. This is a really interesting theme. Which makes sense, and hey, there's Roxy up on the stage right there, and she's currently in a jam session with her fellow band members. But since I have Lumina first in the party, I gotta challenge one of the trainers here, who is apparently running the PA, and I forgot what that stands for. Uh, I guess we're gonna challenge the sound guy, or not. I guess the sound guy is not a trainer. Yeah, that sound guy is not a trainer. Is this guy a trainer? That's a gym leader for you. She really brings out the charms of her Pokemon. Plus, well, she's too wrapped up in what she's doing here. Okay, I guess the only trainers that we get are on the stage, and if I'm right, then we get only two trainers that we have to battle before Roxy. So, let's see what this guitarist is like. Yeah, we do have to battle the guitarist. Let's see what kind of Pokemon she has. I know we don't have a lot of time left in the video, but we have a little bit, just enough to show the episode of this battle. Now, the Pokemon she's using is Venipede, which I, I think I mentioned will appear in the double battle for us on Route 20, but... Venipede is not really that hard to defeat, I think. Venipede are pretty fast, so I'm gonna use Thunder Wave on it first. I gotta beware, because Lumina could be poisoned here, but so far Lumina's got, not getting poisoned. And also Venipede have, have, have higher defense than special defense, so it's a good thing I'm using my special attacker here. In fact, one Pokemon I probably should have put in my party, but I didn't, is Orville. Because Orville knows flying attacks, and I know for a fact that Roxy, I, I, I think Roxy has a Venipede as well. So, just in case she does have a Venipede, I don't know if it's Venipede or some, something else, something else that is Bug-type, but... <laughs> but she does have a Venipede, and there, or, and if she does, then Orville will really help because of his flying attacks. And Lumina got to level 15! Hooray! That means she'll evolve after this battle! And she's learning Charge. Now, Charge will power up Lumina's next electric attack, and it'll also... And it'll also raise her special defense in the meantime, and I'm gonna forget Growl, I guess. I don't know what else I'm gonna forget. But yay, Lumina's gonna evolve after this. I'm so happy. And here's a coughing. 
Now, the Pokemon I'm gonna switch to now is Nitori, and the reason being is that she learned an attack that'll be really useful against Roxy's Pokemon. When I was training her, when she got to level 15, she learned Confusion, and Confusion is a Psychic-type attack, which will be super effective against Poison-type Pokemon. And since it's, and since Coughing has higher, much higher defense than Special Defense, in fact, it has really crappy Special Defense, but I think Confusion will work really well on that Coughing. Let's see if I'm right. Now, unfortunately, Nitori will not gain the same type of attack bonus, which is probably the reason why she's not able to one-hit KO the coughing, but hey, at least it's something, and Nitori got poisoned. Now, the cool thing about poison, though, in this game, I realized, is that in the previous Pokémon game, some of you might, might recall, when a Pokémon is poisoned, and if you walk around, then that Pokémon loses HP while you're walking around. But in this game, that doesn't happen. And yay, Lumina's evolving! <laughs> Let's see what she evolves into. But I just thought that was really neat how they eliminated the fact that a po that a poison Pokemon loses HP while you walk around, which I guess is good because that means because that means you don't have to worry about your Pokemon fainting, which especially is really good if you're doing a Nuzlocke challenge, then your Pokemon don't accidentally faint while you're walking around. But yay, Lumina is now a Flaffy, and uh, she's pink, but as every as every female Pokemon ought to be. But anyway, I'm not even gonna bother healing Nitori's poison for now, because I want to give everybody else a chance to battle. And I'm just gonna take Kahulan's raspberry- I mean, not raspberry, rostberry from him, because I didn't do that yet. And I guess I will put Kahulan in the party- first in the party. Actually, yeah, I'm gonna put Kuhulan first in the party. The other reason why I should do that is because Kuhulan is probably my- Of all my Pokémon, he gains experience the most slowly. He takes forever to gain experience, so I really should gain more experience for him. So let's battle the drummer of this. So what's the drummer like? The drummer is not a drummer, he's a roughneck. I guess there is no official trainer class for drummer in this, so... There is one for guitarist, but not for drummer. And this guy's using a Grimer, which I think also will have lower lower special defense. So it's a good thing Kuhula knows a uh, special attack, that being Ember. Unfortunately, Kuhula will not know the strongest attacks of all, so he might faint in this, but I'm not sure what'll happen. Let's just have to spam Ember and see what happens. Ember is not really doing that bad of damage to him. And it's too bad I don't have any Petra Berries. Actually, I may have any Petra... I, in fact, actually, I may have Petra Berries, and I just don't know about it. But whatever, I think if Kuhula just spans Ember, I think he'll be fine. And hey, that turned out to be a critical hit. And what? Disable? Oh, gee, that's not fair. I gotta have to switch out, because Ember is the only attacking move that Kuhula currently knows. So, I gotta have to switch to somebody else now. Let's see, who am I going to switch to? I gotta switch to Genitor, because Genitor is immune to poison. Now, while I was leveling up Genitor, Genitor actually used Sonic Boom, which does a set 20 HP of damage. And he also- and it also knows Thunder Waves well, and why am I calling Genitor a he? Genitor is genderless. I guess it's because it's based off Mr. Genitor from Mother 3, so that's why I'm obligated to call it male. But I gotta just- I- I gotta demonstrate Sonic Boom, just for the heck of it. Yeah, that looks kinda powerful. And that'll do a lot of damage to Pokémon in the early stages of the game, because a lot of Pokémon don't have a lot of HP at this point in the game. So here's a coughing. Will I switch or will I keep battling? I guess I'll switch to never mind. I'll stick with Genitor. Now what I actually what I when I did a playthrough of of this, uh, well actually I'll mention that later since I'm out of time. I, I'll actually uh, there's actually this one story about a previous battle with Roxy and Black Two that I want to tell, but since we're running out of time in this video, then I'll just save that for the next video. So thank you for watching, everybody. Thank you for watching this Let's Play of Pokemon White 2 so far. And the next part, we will actually challenge Roxy. So stay tuned for part 10, in which we will get our second badge, hopefully. M-O-A!